If you're going to leave a comment hating on Leica for being expensive for what it is, you're probably right. And I'm sure that you can get the same image quality as the Sony Fujinon Z7 III RF mount hybrid autofocus system. However, I would argue the experience of using a camera is more important. And so if you're going to roast this camera, please share your hands-on experience using this camera or a Leica in general to help others with their purchase decisions. In this video, I'm going to talk about why I bought the Leica M11 and the 35mm Summerlux to hopefully give you an understanding of the criteria that I'm using to evaluate this camera after having owned it for about three months or so. And hopefully this may or may not disarm any macro insect photographers who are going to complain about this camera because it doesn't allow you to focus at 0.7 centimeters. Um, Cool. I've used this camera both professionally to shoot the Monaco Ypres and the E1 boats and personally to shoot street photography. And I want to go through why this camera hasn't exactly been what I expected and the few struggles I've been having with this camera. As many of you know, I do not take sponsorships on this channel and I spent my cold hard cash on this camera. And so this is my genuine honest opinion on everything that I've learned so far. So why did I get the Leica M11 and the 35mm Similux? Let's start off with the Leica bias. This beautiful red dot tells people that you're better than them and that is the be all end all of this camera brand. Uh, <laughs> no, but for real, what's the pull? I'm curious. My favourite photographers, Joel Morowitz, Joe Greer, Steve McCurry, Henry Cartier-Bresson, Ralph Gibson, Frederick Herzog, Ernst Haas, they all used Leica. Even the Queen used Leica. Most of my favourite photos ever taken were shot on Leica. And even though these great photographers use Leica, and this doesn't mean that my photos are going to be any better. In fact, I've actually found it to be the opposite, but we're going to talk about that later. I wanted to get a Leica because I was curious. How comes all of these great photographers were drawn to Leica and then seemingly stuck with them? I wanted to see whether I could feel what they felt. So why the M11 in particular? I wanted to try something new and I wanted to see whether the M series would be a good fit for my professional work as well as my personal work. And the M series is renowned for its user experience, being a pleasure to use and it also lasts a long time. Something that a lot of M users talk about is the speed of focus. They seem to have developed muscle memory to know exactly where the finger needs to be so they can focus and they argue quicker than autofocus. And whilst this hasn't quite been the case with me just yet, we'll talk about that later, why the M11 specifically? The resolution. I love to crop images, right? And I thought that having 60 megapixels would give me the most amount of flexibility to allow me to be the most creative that I could be. And the, this extra megapixels has caused some real knock-on effects for my user experience. And there's probably more things to why I chose M11 other than just resolution, but I didn't write them down and so now I've forgotten them. And so why did I get the 35mm Similux? I'm a real lover of 35mm. It just makes sense when it's in my hand. And I trialed the 35mm F2, loved it. But I love close focusing, getting those details to help me tell a compelling story. And the Similux allows you to shoot much closer using the live view. And so when I learned that there was no F2 Simicrons in the UK, and there was only one Simulux. I said YOLO, <laughs> and it will hopefully be a lens that I will never need to upgrade. And finally, let's be real, it's a business expense. Tax write-off and I can claim back the VAT. And this is why so many professionals and YouTubers buy so much expensive kit so frequently. And so when you combine the financial semi-sense with getting one of the best cameras in the world that I can take beautiful image images with for my clients, it makes a decision slightly more acceptable. So what's my experience like with this camera? If you want to see me on the street, I've got an upcoming YouTube video documenting my real-time experience, so subscribe if you want to see that. But right now, this camera feels fantastic to hold. Like, wow. And so much of our experience as a creative is about how our tools make us feel when we're using them. Because the better it feels, the more we use it, the more we practice, the better the results. And my Fuji, Feels like a toy. My Sony feels like I am going to work. And obviously it feels great, but it doesn't quite have the same I'm ready to capture magic like this 
tank does. And it's so indescribable. But one thing I want you to hear is this. Ooh. Ooh. This shutter sounds so incredible and it feels like you are making a photo. And this got me thinking, is this iteration of the M series a creative tool or an experiential tool? Is this built for the hardcore photographer or is it just built for those dentists with deep pockets? You see, when you get the shot, it looks so good. The fall off and the depth of field and the contrast is wonderful. And it's literally just like, bah, when everything comes together, it is incredible, which makes you feel like it's a creative tool. But I felt like I've not been getting the shot anywhere near as much as I have been when out and about using my Fuji, which is confusing because so many of, I guess, my favorite photographers and the best images, in my opinion, were shot on Leica. And so if, I, if I'm being honest, I've been struggling to feel creative with it. Potentially, because I'm a sensitive new wave photographer who misses his little flippy screen and doesn't want to do the hard work to use a viewfinder. Um, potentially, because, because I've been learning more and more about the camera and how to set it up correctly. And that a shutter speed that you think is reasonable, like one over 320, uh, is still not enough. And potentially because I'm just not used to this, cam this camera yet. And I'm comparing myself to the Fuji, right? But it gets me thinking again. My photography style is very compositionally focused. And this is probably because of the tools I've used to build those skills, mirrorless cameras. Everything is presented to me in front of me. And I can take what almost feels like a screenshot of the image. But with a Leica, I get pretty much none of that. My viewfinder is a clear box with some lines around it. And I can just about see the shutter speed out the bottom. And some of that box is actually blocked by this lens hood, which is fun. Um, and to be honest, I've struggled. My compositions just haven't been the same. And this could be due to the focusing on the M series. Like I like to walk around and then capture little moments when I'm out about hunting. And having to focus in the center, because you've got the two squares that line up, and then recompose, I've then missed a lot of images and I've been removing myself from the moment and the composition to figure out where the fuck do I need to move this little tab thing in order to get the focus right. And then to then recompose that has just been so frustrating. But I think that the only way through that problem is route one, is brute force, keep going. Like, yes, I could zone focus. Then you're masking the problem. I liked getting really close to a subject and then next moment taking a super wide shot. And I'd rather go through the frustration of missing a shot at f5.6 over and over and over to get better and better and better, to allow me to become actually great with this camera so I'm able to nail focus. And thankfully, in the third month of owning it, I'm just about getting there. It's still not great, but I am, I'm definitely getting there. And the resolution that I thought would be a real blessing has actually caused me quite a lot of hindrances. For, for ages, my minimum shutter speed was set at 1 over 320. That's pretty quick, right? And because of the mad resolution, any image that's slightly blurry is so obviously blurry. And I was coming back from shoots after using a similar sort of settings I would in the X100V, thinking that I'd missed focus because all my photos were blurry, but I'd actually been too quick with my hand movements to try and get the moment, which is what I'm so used to with every other camera that I own. And this, is, this made me feel like such a noob. I was like, I just don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but now that I've put my minimum shutter speed up to 1 over 500 and I've bumped my ISO range, it's solved this problem, which I'm very thankful for. But it's now caused a different problem. Because there is so much resolution in this camera, I now get so much more noise in my images because I have to push the ISO so much higher because the shutter speed is that much faster. But I then have to download the program Topaz to Noise and that seems to fix everything. But I've never had to deal with this before, right? But now back to my question. Is the M11, is it a creative tool or an experiential tool? And I think both, just not in the way that I'd initially imagined it. You see, the M series is built for storytelling and not for perfectly composed images, even though the output on this is beautiful. And this is where I think I was going wrong because in a rangefinder system, your face isn't buried behind your camera like you are on a, on a big boy Sony camera, right? You're more connected to the scene and you're able to look through your left eye and scan the, the whole scene. 
And you can even see within the, I guess like frame lines within your viewfinder, you can see just around the edges, which is, allows you to react faster and to see things quicker. And it's helped me to really start shooting in a much more documentary style, to push myself creatively and to work in an area that I probably lack as a photographer. And this makes me think that this camera is gonna be by my side for years to come. And I'm not ditching the Fuji gang. There's not a chance of that. But this camera is just another string to my bow. And I'm very excited. But before you go, um, a quick tip if you are gonna get this camera, to uh, turn off the electronic shutter. It's trash. On that note, double beats. <laughs>